And uh, today I want to honor women uh, because it is Mother's Day. And I am going to talk about a woman leader from the Bible uh, who had an amazing way. Uh, many a times we look down upon women, even in the church. Um, so many times we look down upon women and we minimize the impact that they have uh, in the society. Uh, even uh, as Christians, we sometimes tend to think the woman is lesser when God never said she is lesser. Amen? And this morning, I want us to follow a very strong woman uh, in the Bible uh, who will encourage many of the women here and also enlighten many of us men uh, to the potential that is found in our women and that maybe we need to uh, encourage our women more to take uh, roles that we normally would not allow them to, to take. The title of my sharing this morning is Woman, You Are a Strong Leader. Woman, You Are a Strong Leader. Of course, according to the Bible, men are the leaders of families, and that is uh, true because that is how God has set up things. The husband is the head of the wife. Uh, in terms of leadership role, the husband should lead. But uh, most, mostly this is only theoretical. Because practically we find that in many of our homes, uh, it is women who are leading, uh, especially when it comes to raising children. This is the order of God that was established by God that men should lead. And we see throughout the Bible that men have failed to lead again and again. And God has, you know, because God always has plan B and has raised women who can lead and do a good job, uh, those who are um, really willing to, uh, to take up the assignment that is before him. And because of the failure of men in general, that is why we have so much disorder in the world that we live in. That is why families are broken. That is why the enemy is doing whatever it is that he wants to do in our families, because men in general have failed to lead as God intended them to lead. And it's an encouragement to all men to provide the leadership that God uh, wants us to provide uh, to our families, to our children, to our wives, uh, and to the community. There are some sad statistics that come from here in our own country. Um, only 27% of children are raised in families where there is both a mother and a father in a marriage set up. 27%. That means 73% of children today are raised by single parents. That is very scary. That means only one quarter of children are raised in families. And we only pray that those families are also functioning properly. So we see that... Uh, uh, you know, things have really been going down. Uh, Professor Tapelo uh, wrote this uh, some time back that the last 30 years has seen the decline of the family uh, in our country, leading us to a moment now in time where we have only 27% of children being raised in a mother father setup. And we know that even within that setup, uh, there's brokenness. Uh, uh, you know, you may be in a married uh, set up, but um, <clears throat> the family is not functioning as it should. The support to each other is not there as it should be. And many of us have uh, sacrificed our children and our families uh, for careers. And we understand, you know, the economic uh, situation. We live in a world that needs money. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, we see the brokenness that uh, comes as a result of that in our children. And so children are raised in broken families, and then they become adults, and they try to also raise families, but they are broken themselves, and the thing continues, and it's a, it's a down, uh, it's a spiral that is just going down and down, and the family unit is in trouble. And that is why God is calling uh, his sons to stand up in this generation to proclaim his order, to heal the brokenhearted, to restore families together, to have everything in order. And, uh, you know, as Africans, 
also this witchcraft mentality is also creating problems for us because families are divided because we believe Rakhadi is bewitching you and, uh, you know, Mangwan is bewitching you and, uh, you know, the sister to your, you know, Mangwa, all of this is just going on and the devil is trying all he can to break up our families and this thing has been going on for too long. And it is time for children of the Most High God to rise up and say the family unit needs to be uh, restored. Because remember, family is very central to the purposes of God. It is very critical, it's very important, and we should not let the family go down the drain as the enemy uh, uh, wants it to happen. Hallelujah. So in all of this brokenness and problems, uh, we have seen mothers rising up to the occasion. Uh, it is very rare for a mother to leave children uh, to the father to raise. It's very rare. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But it is very easy for men to leave children uh, to the mothers to raise them. And many a times the man is the one who is strong economically. He, he's working uh, somewhere. He has income, better income. And the mother is just there and has to hustle around to raise these children. And the father comes once uh, for Christmas with sweets and with some toys, and children think the father is everything. And, you know, they go against the mother because, you know, they do when he comes, uh, he's, he brings us sweets and toys and clothes for Christmas. But they don't understand the frustration of a mother of every day trying to provide food for them. Because let me tell you, if you try to provide food for a week, you realize that the toys that you get once at Christmas is nothing yeah. compared to uh, the sustaining. And unfortunately, uh, some fathers don't even know uh, how their children go to school. They are not participating. Today, school fees is very expensive. It's really, really expensive. And you know, uh, fathers just leave children all over and the mothers. One day when this child is well educated, doctor, so and so, he's proud and says, this is my daughter, this is my son, you know. But they, they were never involved in the raising of this uh, uh, child all the way throughout. And so this is the problem that we find ourselves in. And you know what, mothers have stood up through their difficulties, trying to make ends meet. And you know what? We children have frustrated mothers. We don't understand the sacrifices they make, the every day that they make for us. And we demand this. We have bad attitudes. You know, we just, we don't appreciate. We just assume that somehow things fall from heaven and the fridge is full from heaven. No, the mothers uh, spend days and nights working hard to make sure that they provide the basics that we, we, we have and we don't appreciate. We appreciate the one who buys us uh, something on Christmas. Hallelujah. This needs to change in our minds and realize that the continuing sacrifice of a mother is a sacrifice of herself, basically. A sacrifice of herself. And it's a challenge to men who are here to say, uh, you know, where are your children? Where are they? Who is raising your children? I'm not talking about the ones that we know. I'm talking about the other ones <laughs> that we don't know. <laughs> Who is raising them? <laughs> Do you know that this child is growing up very bitter because their father is not involved in their lives? You know, you are now born again. Go and look for that child. Tell your wife that, hey, you know, <laughs> things happened, eh? Things were a little bit hard, so, you know, I... Yeah, tell us, <clears throat> because it's going to come out somewhere. It, it always comes out. So the sooner you do it, the better. Hallelujah. And try and build that child's life who is far away. Hallelujah. So mothers do make a huge sacrifice. And today we want us to look at the life of Deborah. Uh, we, we usually call her in Sitsuana Deborah. I get, or we, even in English we say Deborah. Uh, but it's Deborah. And we are going to look at her life. And let's us go to the book of Judges, uh, chapter 4. And we will read through there and pick some points concerning this woman uh, of God. Judges, chapter 4. It says, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehud was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. Sasira, the commander 
of his army was based in Harasheth Hagoyim. Because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, they cried to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. I'm going to read that again, verse 4. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. Deborah, a prophet, a wife, a leader. She held caught under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. You remember, that's what Israelites used to do with Moses. They went to Moses to have their disputes decided. Now, here is a woman, and the Israelites, Israelites, the nation chosen by God, goes under the palm tree called Deborah's palm tree, and she sits there and she decides their disputes. So she was a judge. Hallelujah. Verse 6, she went to Barak, not, not Obama. She went to Barak, son of Abinon, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Jebelin and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands, says the Lord. Barak said to, he, to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Now, Barak was a man. He was the leader of the army. He was the commander of the army. And Deborah goes to him and he says, the Lord says you must take up this huge army. And this man, the commander of the army, says, I will go to her if you, woman Deborah, goes with me. In other words, I'm scared of going alone, but if you come with me, I will go. Can all the women say amen? Amen. All right. She says in verse 9, certainly I will go with you, says say Deborah, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. The Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So he's, she's saying to, her, to him, look, because you don't want to take this by faith on your own, and you are asking for a woman to accompany you, you will not have the final victory, but God will give it to a woman. Hello? Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you about this king, because he was not a, a weak king. He had oppressed Israel for 20 years. This was a strong man, and you can hear he had 900 uh, you know, tanks, war tanks. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go on. Um, <clears throat> where am I? <clears throat> verse 10. Okay, uh, verse 9. Certainly I'll go with you, said Deborah, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sasra into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali, and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. Now, they have 10,000 men, and the army they are going against has 100,000 soldiers. They only have a tithe. Okay? All right, let's go ahead. When they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abinom, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera, someone from Harosheth, Hagoin to the Kishon River, all his men and his 900 chariots fitted with iron. Okay, these are the tanks. Then Deborah said to Barak, go, this, now the, the, the woman, Deborah says to Barak, go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount Tabor and 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord rooted Sisera and all of his chariots and, and army by the sword, and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Okay? This is the man who commands 100,000 troops. They, they are defeated, and then he leaves his chariot, his tank, and he runs on foot. <clears throat> 
Verse 16, Barak pursued the chariots and the army as far as Harasheth Hagoyim, and all Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Now remember, it's 10,000 against 100,000. The 10,000 make sure that they defeat the 100,000. Hallelujah. Okay, not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heba the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Haza, and the family of Hebe the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered her, her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I am thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he said to her, if someone comes by and asks you, is anyone there, say no. But Jael, Heba's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went to him while he was fast asleep, exhausted. He, she drove the peg through his temple, temple uh, into the ground and he died. What did the prophetess say? You shall be defeated by a woman. He thought, Barak thought the woman will be Deborah. But look at what the Lord is doing. The prophet has spoken that he, the king, will be defeated by a woman. So here is a woman who kills him. He died. Just then Barak came in pursuit of Sisera, and Jael went out to meet him. Come, she said. I will show you the man you are looking for. So he went in with her, and they lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple, dead. On that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is a very interesting story, very, very interesting indeed, about a woman who was the judge of Israel. So according to the book of Judges chapter 4 and 5, actually chapter 5 is a poem that was made by Deborah herself, uh, just praising the Lord about what he did uh, on this day. Hallelujah. Uh, apparently this name, Deborah, means bee, you know. Bee makes honey. It's sweet. Again, it makes sweet honey. Uh, bees make, make honey, but they can sting very hard. Hallelujah. So de that was Deborah. She was a prophet of God uh, of Israel, and he was the fourth judge in Israel. You, saw, you remember there was a time where judges were ruling over Israel? God chose a woman to be the fourth judge, the leader of Israel. Hallelujah. Can all the women say amen? amen. So what is this saying? That God believes that women can lead. And in Israel, his chosen uh, nation, there was a woman who led Israel by the name of Deborah. Hallelujah. Uh, she was the only female judge that is uh, mentioned in the Bible. And he was a wife of Lepidoth. We don't know much about him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so here we hear God telling her to lead an attack against the forces of Jabin, king of Canaan, and his military commander by the name of Sisera. Hallelujah. And we see all of this written uh, in the book of uh, uh, Judges chapter 4 as we read it. So it is very clear from where we have read that Deborah was a prophet, she was a judge of Israel, and she was a wife of Lepida. So she was a wife but a leader at the same time. Hallelujah. She was submitting to her husband, but she was also ruling Israel. It is possible to be a wife and a leader at the same time. And we hear that she rendered judgments under the, day, uh, uh, the, the, the palm tree between Ramah and Benjamin in Bethel in that land of Ephraim. Hallelujah. So the story behind is that the Israelites had been under oppression by Jabin, the king of Canaan, uh, uh, for 20 years. They were afraid of him. He was a strong leader who had a huge army. And not only that, he also had chariots. Uh, chariots today will be your cars or your tanks. If they are cars of, uh, of the war, they will be your tanks today. And the Bible says they had, he had chariots of iron. This is about 3,000 years ago. You can imagine they were able to make chariots out of iron that day. And we, they are still doing it today. 
uh, they're still using iron to make cars. So this guy was very advanced, and he probably had wise men and uh, scientists and whatever it is who could make chariots that were feared. 900 chariots that he had. That is huge. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we see that Israel lives in constant fear. And now they have a woman who is a judge. And, you know, there is this fear. They don't know what is going to happen. They are oppressed. You know, they, you know this king can do whatever he wants to do with them until Deborah. Uh, uh, one day in verse 14, chapter 4, verse 14, he says to, to, to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount uh, Taba uh, with 10,000 men following him. So we see that he attacks as a result of the voice of a woman. Hallelujah. This is an amazing thing. So I want us to look at Deborah and maybe begin to see what kind of a woman she was. What was she? The first thing that we see there is that she was a wife. She was a judge. She was the president, we may call that. But she was also a wife. A wife who was submissive to her husband. We don't know much about her husband except his name. And also, we don't know whether they had children together. But we know that she was a wife. How do you behave when a, you have a powerful wife under you? Hallelujah. Who is leading you? Who is the judge? Who is the president? How do you behave? I can only imagine that this man was a man who believed in his wife, who supported his wife, who made his wife shine. Hallelujah. And many a times, many of us as men, uh, we have a problem when our wives become prominent uh, we begin to be insecure uh, just a simple thing like a salary when your wife earns more than you just that it begins to shake you as if you don't know that you are one it's because we have this independence mentality that what is mine is mine what is theirs is theirs but when we are one, we spur each other on, we encourage each other on, we know that what we have, uh, you know, is ours. But many men, because of the insecurities that they have, as soon as the woman uh, begins to rise up, they become insecure. They begin to follow her. They think a woman cannot make it in life without doing something that is wrong, without men taking advantage of her. But I can tell you, a husband who supports the wife, who praises the wife, who raises the wife, is, is, is a husband who will make sure that the wife really rises. And the wife will continue to respect a man who honors her and who encourages her. But if you are always telling her, belittling her, telling her that now that she has a, a this and that, she thinks she's better, you are keeping her inside. Imagine a judge who has to go under a palm tree and judge disputes, and they came out from a home that was just always hitting, hitting on her. Will she have a mind that is clear? No. Hallelujah. So I want to say to the men in this house today, if you have a powerful wife, a more educated wife, a leader wife, a boss wife, support her. Boss ladies must be supported. Hallelujah. Love them, nurture them. Say you can make it. When they dress up in the morning and they come to you and say, how do you look? Don't say, ah, you, those men are going to look at you. <laughs> huh? You are thinking of the men. You are not thinking about how beautiful. Tell her she's shining. Huh? Tell her you, you look beautiful. When they look at you and, and they, 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 they are swallowing the saliva, say my husband has already approved. My husband is at home. My husband is happy with who I am. Let them know that you are shiny and glowing because they have, you have a supporter at home. Hallelujah. Make her glow. And when she glows, she's happier. She makes better decisions. She has no stress. Hallelujah. Sometimes as men, we become so insecure that we stress our wives. We must encourage them. We must spare them on. A wife who is encouraged, you know, uh, becomes fat. <laughs> a wife who lives well becomes fat in their spirit. <laughs> a fat spirit is a good thing. I'm telling you. 
When your wife is fat, she's happy. Utusumayaka manyumani, she's glowing. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it is you who can feed your wife. You can feed her with compliments. You can feed her. You can tell her how beautiful she looks. Don't let other men tell your wife how beautiful she looks. If they say it, may she already have heard it from you. Hallelujah. If you don't know how to do it, man, go to the book of uh, Song of Solomon. You'll find it there. Every description is there. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, some women are starved with compliments. Huh? And when they go to work, they're hearing, hey, today, yo, when you are moving, it's like the earth is shaking. <laughs> I'm feeling dizzy just looking at you moving. She must have heard that from home first, from you as a husband. And when she hears it, says, ah, old news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Make your wife fat. Make your woman fat. Hallelujah. Now we are starving them. We're starving them compliments. They go there and they hear them from this and they, I wish my husband will say this. I wish my husband will say this. We African men, we have been taught that we don't, we don't, we don't tell our children we love them and our, our wives because we, they, we will spoil them. No, we must tell them. They must hear it from us first. The world out there, they are ready to tell them. Hallelujah. Can, can I hear the amen from the, the women? Uh, Pastor, I told her when I married her, she's beautiful. What does she want now? <laughs> Some of us, we even do worse. We tell, ah, you are fat nowadays, eh? Hmm, lose that weight. What's wrong with you? Huh? There's a way you of putting things that can be appealing. Huh? My wife, you know, hey, this belly is bothering me nowadays. Why don't we start exercising together? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Mr. Moyo is saying thank you, Jesus, very loud. <laughs> so she was a wife who had a supportive husband. That's why she was glowing. That's why she could uh, be a prophetess. That's why she could do the things that God wanted her to do. So the second thing that we see about her was that she was a prophetess. Hallelujah. Deborah is one of the several females, several females in the Bible who had the prophetic gift. Prophetic gift is, on, is not only for men. There are many women in the Bible who were prophetic. And you know the advantage about women? They have this thing called intuition. Men should listen to their wives. Women, they know that something is wrong without knowing why. Intuition. Hmm? When the... Uh, many of us men, we have made many blunders. We have gone into investments uh, that, uh, you know, the wives were saying, eh, eh, this is dangerous, don't go there. Don't go, ah, no, no, I know this guy, you know, he, he's very good. He's, you know, he has done this and the, the wife will say, mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't feel right. Ah, you women, you are always saying no. And you go in, you pour the family's finances in there. And then it comes back biting. And the poor wife doesn't want to say, I told you so. She just says, it's okay, we'll make it, my honey. We'll make it. Hmm? Inside, she knows, yeah, I told him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So women are sensitive in that way. They have intuition. They have an ability to know things. And so she was one of the prophets uh, in Israel. Uh, the women are able to perceive things that are deeper. Hallelujah. Uh, so we see that she was a prophetess, an office that was held by men and women, and God still has prophetic women in our midst today. Hallelujah. That we need to take note of honor and listen when God speaks to them. Hallelujah. So during a time where Israel was desperate, they didn't know where to go, how to go about it, a woman of God stands and says, God says, she speaks to the man, to the military leader, of the nation and says God says and because of that they stand and they take the victory the third thing that we see about Deborah is that she was a steerer uh, you know a steerer somebody uh, who makes you uh, begin to see things that you didn't see she was steering people steering people's hearts hallelujah she was making them believe again they were afraid they were dejected 
and their spirits were down, they were broken, they, 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 they wanted deliverance. And so Deborah begins to steer their hearts so that they can believe that this thing can happen. Hallelujah. She, uh, uh, she prophesies and she begins to arouse the, the, the nation to believe that God can do something in their time. Sometimes you need somebody who can steer your faith and says, come on, we can do it. You remember during the time of uh, uh, Israel, when they were to cross into the promised land, uh, there were two men who were, do you know, remember the 12 spies? Uh -huh. And then we had Caleb and Joshua who said, we can do it. They were steering people in the right direction. The 10 were steering people in the negative direction. And because they were steer us in the faith in God, God honored them. They were the only ones who went into the promised land. So Deborah was a steerer who steered the people of God to believe that no matter their condition, although they were oppressed for 20 years, God could still do something. And they began to, uh, to believe it. Now, uh, we see that uh, uh, Deborah spoke to the military leader, Barak. But to convince the 10,000 men to go against 100,000 men, it requires a special person to steer the people to that because it doesn't make sense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's like Botswana fighting against America. It doesn't make sense. You need somebody who can steer you to believe that you can do it. And Deborah was such a steerer who was needed at a time where uh, Israel was down, uh, was you know, they felt so low. And I can tell you there are many times where I have been discouraged where my wife has steered me to believe that we can do it. And husbands, you, you know, many times we husbands, because we are, uh, we are people of solutions, we, we are the ones who give solutions. When we are down, when we are out, when we feel discouraged, we just keep to ourselves. We do not share with our wives. You will be surprised if you share with your wife what you are going through how the Lord can use your wife to speak to you and encourage you out of your situation. One of the reasons why many men commit suicide is because they keep things to themselves. They don't share with anyone. But I can tell you that there is a steerer in your wife. There's a steerer in the mother of your children who can encourage you and raise you from the depth uh, where you are. Uh, she, you know, during the time where people were oppressed and they were down, uh, Deborah was like Winnie Mandela. Hmm? She was like Mama Mandela during that time. Hallelujah. And what happened was Mandela and the men, all of the leaders of Israel, I mean of South Africa, they were in prison, Robben Island and other prisons. Who was remaining behind to steer the people? Who made Mandela famous? Who kept the memory of Mandela going on? It was Winnie Mandela. She went to jail, out of jail. They did all. She continued to stand and fight during a time uh, of the struggle. She did not want the memory of Mandela to go. She's a woman who went through a lot of things. She was, the, she describes as the most unmarried married woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. She was married just in name, but she never had the opportunity to enjoy her husband. Even the time when the husband was there, the husband was always running away, coming in the middle of the night and escaping before he's caught. She never really enjoyed the marriage. She went through a lot, raised the children alone, under very difficult circumstances, fought for freedom. And then... When Mandela comes, he takes on the throne. When Mandela is thrown away, she's a bad woman. And this is what happens again, again, and again to our mothers. Hallelujah. But you know what? God sees, and God will give us a signal. Hallelujah. He sees, and he will give us a signal. Hallelujah. So there are many Winnie Mandela's here who have been struggling alone, doing a lot of things alone, struggling. And the children now, they turn against you. And now the father who has not been there, who has not seen the suffering, he's the hero. God will give a signal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us be encouraged that God sees, he knows the truth, and he will give us a signal. The fourth thing is that she was a ruler. The fifth of the leaders, of the judges in Israel. Raised by God to deliver the people of God from the bondage, from their idolatry. And, uh, you know, she ruled with righteousness before God. She was a woman who was a judge, who was the leader of Israel. And God 
honored her. She dispersed righteousness and justice and mercy under the palm tree. Uh, you know, palms were very rare during that time. So the palm tree was like a landmark. So they had this date palm tree that they called the, uh, the palm of Deborah, where she ruled from. And many people came there and she gave wisdom. Hallelujah. And she gave victory to the nation. The, four, the last thing, the, uh, no, the fourth thing is she was a warrior. Okay? Is that the fourth thing? Fifth thing. Really? Okay, let's go over it. A wife, a prophetess, a starer, number three, a ruler, number four. She was a warrior, number five. Hallelujah. She did not stay at home when the armies of Israel went to war. What did she do? She went with Barak. Actually, Barak insisted that she goes with him. I won't go if you don't go. You remember Moses, what did he say to God? God, if you don't go with us, we will not go. Now here, Barak is saying to Deborah, if you don't go with us, I will not go. Do, do you realize the powerful uh, uh, position that she, she took? Hallelujah. Uh, we can read about all of this. Uh, she went to war with Barak. Hallelujah. Uh, the sixth thing is that she was a poet or a poetess. Hallelujah. You can go and read chapter 5 of Judges where she composed this powerful poetry. She talks about what the Lord has done. And amazingly, somewhere there, uh, she reveals something that we did not see in chapter 4. That the stars lined up and fought for Israel on the side of Israel. Let me see whether I can find it quickly so that you see this. Do you know that the creation... Creation acknowledges the sons of God. Hallelujah. Listen to this in verse. Where is that verse again? Where it talks about the stars lining up. In chapter 5. Somebody can find it quickly. Verse 19. Kings came, they fought. The kings of Canaan fought at Tana by the waters of Megiddo. They took no plunder of silver. From the heavens, verse 20, from the heavens, the stars fought. You see what happens when God is on your side? The heavens begin to align with you. And she says, from the heavens, the stars fought. From their causes, they fought against Sisera. Hallelujah. And listen to this. The river Keshon swept them away. The age-old river, the river Keshon, march on my soul, be strong. Hallelujah. When God is on your side, even creation lines up with you. Hallelujah. Number six, or is it number seven? She was also a maternal figure. She was a mother. Like I said, the Bible doesn't tell us whether she had children of her own, but the Bible calls her a mother in Israel. She became a mother of a nation. She may not have had children from her own womb, but she became a mother of the nation. Hallelujah. And this is how God honors her. She had grace that came out of her like a sweet smelling server over the whole land, and she became a mother to the nation. This is Deborah, and I want all the women to be encouraged here that leadership is in you. God can do it through you if you will avail yourself, if you will surrender to him. And as we go into the New Testament, many people may say, uh, do women still matter? Now let us look at this. Why is the church called the bride of Christ? Hallelujah. Do you know that the church is called a woman? And why is the function of the church today, it is to finish off what Christ has started. We are to defeat the enemy. So again and again we see that the church, men and women together, they are called the wife of Christ. Look at your husband and say, hello wife. <laughs> that is the truth. You are the wife of Christ. And God has set the church to be the one that finishes of the devil today. He says, the seed of a woman shall crush your head, shall defeat you. Hallelujah. 
Jesus was born of a woman. God honors women, women, hallelujah. And I want you to know that you must take your position as a woman and lead and be. Of course, of course, we have to be balanced. You are not going to lead your husband. That is disorder. Hallelujah. But you are a leader under your husband according to the will of God. And husbands should not be threatened by the gifts that God has given to our wives. We are the ones that can make them glow. Hallelujah. Let us be encouraged this morning. Uh, women, let us be encouraged. Men, let us be encouraged to support our women and know that God is able to use them and to bring salvation. Where was her husband when she was uh, bringing victory to Israel? The husband was there saying, that is my wife. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you this morning, oh God, for encouraging all of the women in this church and us as men to recognize the gifts that we've put in women, the gifts of leadership that we see again and again over the Bible. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you uh, this morning as you have been talking to us about leadership, that our women can also rise up as leaders in today's generation, in the spheres that you have given them. They are leaders uh, 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 over our children, our God. They guide our children, they teach our children. They are the ones who have been teaching our children the word of God, although you have chosen us as men to lead in that regard. Father, may you honor them and may you help us as men to be there to guide them and to lead them in the right direction. May all of our insecurities be gone in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. While our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, you may be here, you do not know Jesus as your personal savior. You want to be part of the bride of Jesus Christ. You want to be with God uh, 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 when he comes to finally take these children. If you are there, please raise up your hand. We want to include you uh, in, the, uh, in the fellowship of God, in the house of God. So if you are here and you're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus, uh, may you please raise your hand wherever you are. We want to call you into the kingdom of God. You are saying, I have not given my life to the Lord, and I would like to give my life to the Lord. And we want to give you this opportunity this morning. Anyone, just raise your hand wherever you are. All right, I don't see anyone. I believe that we are all right with God. Hallelujah. We want to thank the Lord. We are going to stand up to worship the Lord, and uh, we are just going to pray to God that God help us to take our rightful position. Yes, man, Lord, help me to see uh, the potential in my wife, in my girl children, and to raise them up to be who you want them to be. And as wives, let us pray that God will help us to be submissive to the husbands that God has given us, to be respectful, to love them, and, uh, you know, to help them to come to the full knowledge of God where they are lacking. And also that God will position us in the things that he wants us to be positioned in. Let us stand up as they sing a song. Let's go.